I'm Holly Walker-Stewart, a certified Iyengar yoga teacher, and today we're practicing a quick yoga fix for people who sit in chairs all day using the chair. So um, the first uh, pose that we're going to do is called Urdhva Anandulyasana. We're going to do it two different ways. It means upward interlaced fingers pose. You're going to sit on the edge of the chair, look straight ahead, and watch out. See how I'm holding onto the seat and I'm bending my elbows out to the sides a little bit? I'm moving my triceps towards my elbows. Those are the muscles in the back of my upper arm. And lifting from my inner elbow up the length of my inner bicep towards my inner upper arm while keeping my back ribs from sinking back. Do you see that? Or drop them down and lift them in and lift them up. Okay, now from here, you're going to take your arms out in front of you and watch how I keep my upper arms fixed firmly into the sockets, but I don't jam them back because that's going to make me do that. Watch how I move the back of my chest towards the front of my chest as I move my upper arms back at the same time. You see that? Okay, now from here, I'm going to bend my wrists and interlace my fingers, turn my palms away from me, and then see how I lean forward halfway. Do you see that? Forward, but I don't round my back. I just, at the hips, hinge forward, and then from here, with an exhalation, Take your arms up and back behind your ears. Now, inhale into the top of your chest, and with your next exhalation, raise your chin slightly. Exhale all the way down into your lower abdomen and bring your trunk back up to perpendicular. Do you see how my arms are slightly behind me, but I'm not leaning back? And then with an exhalation, bring those arms down. Put your hands. One little finger is on the bottom, the other is on the top. Interla change the interlace of your fingers. Turn your palms away from you. Simultaneously, move the back of your chest towards the front of your chest as you pull the upper arms back into the sockets. With an exhalation into your lower abdomen, hinge forward halfway at the hips. Keep the toes lifted so the heels stay down and move your spine in and out as you take those arms back. You can lift your chin a little bit to help you here with that. If the head goes down, do you see how the back rounds? See how I keep my chin moving forward and upward slightly, and then come back up to perpendicular with your trunk. But you see how the arms are back? And then with an exhalation, release your arms back to your side. Okay, so that was the first way of practicing Urdhva Bhattabhulyasana. The next way, we're going to keep the elbows bent and take the back of the hands onto, not the top of the head, but closer to the back of the head, not all the way on the back, but just in between the top and the back. Okay, so again, change the interlace of your fingers, turn your palms away from you, but instead of extending your elbows, keep your elbows bent, and bring the center of the back of your interlaced knuckles closer to the back of the top of your head. Now watch, I'm not letting my elbows go way back, right? I'm keeping my elbows sort of like just behind my temples. And with my next exhalation, just like you're going to do, I'm going to press my elbows and forearms in towards each other, Press my buttocks down into the chair, buttock bones and my heels and balls of the toes into the floor to take those arms up. You see how my arms are back behind me again? But I'm not leaning back, just like in the first variation of work of Anandulyasana. And then bend the elbows and change the interlace. Inhale into the chest, exhale into the lower abdomen. And bring those elbows and forearms closer together. So you can see if I turn this way that my elbows are not bent, right? 
I squeeze the elbows and the forearms together to take the palms up towards the ceiling and bring the arms back behind the ears. Okay, the next um, pose that we're going to do using our chair is called Bharat Vajasan in the chair. It's one of the twists dedicated to um, a sage. This one is Sage Bharat Vajasan. So this time I'm going to sit through the chair, but before I do, I want to show you how I'm, I have a belt with one large loop in it, you can see that, and I'm taking that loop under the back of the chair, and I'm threading one end through the other, and then bringing that over to the left side, okay? Now, first things first, I'm going to sit backwards through the chair, and show you how I bring this belt around behind me so that I have it close by. Okay. So one thing that happens in chair Bharat Vajasana is that sometimes we end up sort of in this position where one side of the trunk is down and one side is up. So we're going to help remedy that by taking your hand across. So I'm taking my left arm across to the right side of my body, and then I'm holding with my palm turned towards me, the right side of the back of the chair. And I'm going to pull down with my hand to lift the left pectoral area up and bring it over towards my right hand. So my left hand is helping me turn the left side of my trunk and watch, I'm going to thread, because I'm a shorter person, I'm going to sort of narrow this up a bit so I don't have as much of a circle in the belt. So I keep the left hand pulling down, the left pectoral region lifting up and moving forward. And as I exhale into my lower abdomen, see how, see how my palm is facing you? And I'm going to take that arm back towards the wall behind me. Okay, and I could actually tighten this up a little bit more because I don't feel any resistance with the belt when I want to, because it's that resistance that's going to create the mobility, along with the breath. Inhale, into the chest, exhale, into the lower abdomen, and Watch, I want you to see how my shoulder, right, is forward and my palm is backward. I'm going to press my palm forward into the belt to help me roll that shoulder backward as I turn. So that I'm turning with a wide open chest. And then watch, do the other side. I'm going to take the belt, slide it around, and repeat. I'm going to show you from the back. Again, this time I'm taking my right arm across my body and holding the chair. I'm pulling down with my right hand to lift the right pectoral, this upper chest region, up and bring it forward. And then taking my left palm and pressing it forward into the belt, I roll that shoulder back. The next pose is a variation of a pose called Virabhadrasana, warrior pose. So in this variation, I'm seated on the chair. With my buttock bones at the edge of the chair, I'm going to turn to the right. And watch out, I'm going to bring the back of my right thigh onto the right, uh, to the chair seat. Can you see that? There it is, okay? So from uh, the buttock bone forward, I'm supporting the back of this leg. If I was taller 
and my knee was up and my hip was down, I would put a blanket on the chair seat, okay? So, but my left thigh is not on the chair seat at all, okay? So now I'm going to take my left hand and hold, I'm twisting, turning just a little bit towards the um, back of the chair, right? So that this left side of my back is moving towards the front, okay? But I'm not turning all the way, right? It's just, it's just enough. Okay, now with my next exhalation, I'm going to lower my left knee and shin, ankle, and the top of my foot so that they face the floor, okay? Now watch, just like you did in the previous pose, or Tabarangulayasana, in that first stage, you're going to exhale into your lower abdomen and lean forward, right? And then extend your left leg back towards the wall behind you. But see how the left buttock has the middle buttock right here, has to stay moving down as the back of the leg lifts up towards the ceiling. And then from here, see how I place my right hand on my right thigh as I bring my trunk back up towards perpendicular, just like you did in Ordva Baddha In fact, you can interlace your fingers here and take your arms up into Ordva Baddha As long as the middle buttock doesn't go um, out from the body, you keep that middle buttock moving in. And then with an exhalation, bring those arms down, bend your knee, and turn to the other side. So again, I want you to see how it's the back of this left leg that's supported, but the right leg is off of the chair. And I turn just enough so that I feel like I'm not going to fall off of the chair when I take my right hip into extension. The left hip is in flexion and the right one is in extension. Okay, now from here, with an exhalation into my lower abdomen, I'm extending forward just halfway. You do the same, and then without letting that middle buttock pull out from the body, it's the part that moves out when you sit down in a chair. You have to keep that tucked in as you extend the knee of the right leg. Okay, now with your next exhalate inhalation, you're going to inhale, into your chest and extend the front of your spine forward and with your next exhalation into your lower abdomen, come on up. And it helps to use this left hand on the thigh to keep your right buttock, so you press your left hand down, tuck that right buttock in and come up. And my right leg has a more of a difficult time because it's my driving leg. It wants to bend, right? So I have to be extra aware of that habit and cultivate that opposite paksha prati paksha as Patanjali says and exert some more effort and then so I have awareness that the right leg is wants to bend more than the left and has a more difficult time straightening and I apply more yatna or effort to extending through that heel and then change the interlace of your fingers and again you can go back to that bringing the palms back of the hands onto the head and then stretching up by squeezing the forearms and the elbows into one another. 